It's hard to do it with the abs. Go on, offer it. Can you do my back? <laughs> welcome back to Day Rates. Day Rates, welcome back to it. The What do we talk about on this show? Design and money? That sounds right. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Day Rates, the show we talk about design and money. Uh, today we're talking about how to write a fucking script. How have you been, Joel? Good, thank you, Miles. Good, I've also been good. That's good. I didn't ask you, but okay. Uh, okay. Um, what's uh, <laughs> the topic today, Miles? How to write the perfect ninety-second explainer video script. Great. Let's let's get into it. Ba-da, ba-da, ba-da. All right, we're gonna break it down. And show you how to make the perfect script. Oh, shit. All right. I'm excited, Miles. Let's get into it. There is a very simple formula that we use for scripting most animations. I have never written a script. I do a lot of the scripts around here. Take it away. And I've got a little simple formula that'll help you out. Yeah, scripting, I find, I think, if I was to freelance, Miles. Yes, go for it. I don't know how to write. So you usually do the scripts around here. If I was to freelance and like do a thing, I think, I mean, I'd give it a go, but I think I'd end up having to like hire a copywriter or some shit because yeah, I boy feel, can't write. I feel like maybe that does, well, because we're a studio, we are expected to do the whole thing from an end. Yeah. And so that's why we've got the copywriting skills in-house. But it's not that hard. And I feel like most animators could do it. And it's probably a good skill to have if you're going to do personal projects and stuff like that. That's true. Just to understand the writing process. Make sure you don't put your first worst idea down and then go with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyone can write. It's not that hard. I do think if I sat with it for a while and like kept revisiting, I could probably do it. Yeah. But I also need someone to teach you. Do you guys need someone to teach you how to write a script? Take it away. Maybe an unqualified 28-year-old could help. <laughs> you did journalism. That's like I did do writing. journalism and I wore my little press cap and did I you? went up there and I was like, what's the scoop, buddy? And I had the big camera like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Phosphorus fires everywhere. <laughs> the meat district burned down. You got to make your own stories. Extra, extra. <laughs> so there is a simple structure for writing. Like I think we should talk about this in terms of a, a 90 second explainer video. Yep, standard. Because that's a lot of what you'll get. You know, people will request that video over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff like, you know, like smaller Instagram videos and stuff like that. You still need to write a script, but it's probably like less word heavy. So yeah. scripting is most relevant to this style of thing. And the 90 second explainer videos have like a pretty standard structure to them. And I've used the same formula for most of ours and it's always been great. So yeah. um, step one Pew. is introduce the problem. Do you have too many boxes? Or it could be in today's world, boxes are everywhere. <laughs> And more boxes means more data. But what do you do with box data? So something like that. Something that says, hey, you've got too many boxes. Yeah. This is the problem. Mm -hmm. If only there was some solution, you know, which brings us to step two, introduce your app, Boxly. Okay. (laughs) Boxly.io. Boxly.io. I mean, it's probably, let's look it up. Boxly.io. Let's do it right now. Shout out to Boxly. This is definitely going to be porn. The easiest... (laughs) Out of here, dude. Shout out to Boxly. We want to make your video. Boxly is the first mobile dynamic document platform where data interacts like an app. Uh, We fucking did it. You know, Boxly is the Boxly we're talking about is a purely fictional character. We're in no way trying to, you know. Okay. Legal disclaimer here, just like the Star Wars type fucking. We're not talking about Boxly specifically, but we're talking about Boxly. I'm sticking with the box metaphor. We're doing it till the end. (laughs) Oh my god, I can't believe this shit. It's so funny. (laughs) These days, boxes are everywhere. In our cars, our homes, and even in our workplace. More boxes means more data connected across several box devices. Too many boxes can lead to missed deadlines, miscommunication, and admin headaches. We wanted to put these problems in a box, so we made Boxly.io, a unified box data system. Boxly.io curves the edges of boxes, turning them into spheres. Spheres allow data to travel smoothly from each node in the box network. Yeah, so you've introduced your problem, too many boxes, too much data. (laughs) Introducing Boxly. And then maybe you have like a small tagline there, like your box data solution specialist. Okay, and clients will give you the worst taglines. So if it's not baked into their brand and they just want some sort of tag on that, like make sure it's not stupid. Yeah. You know, so help them with that. So problem up front, then we've introduced the product. Mm -hmm. And now you want to go into... Features. 
You don't want to go into features just yet. See, I would have went into features. This is why this guy makes the big bucks. Features can eat a bone, all right? Features. Fuck features. Take a break because upfront is those key benefits. Benefits. The top level, like, why do you want to get this product? How does it actually just solve that problem we've established? So before you get into the nitty gritty of like, Boxly uses a SaaS service interface, <laughs> you want to talk about how Boxly is helping you with your box data, all right? Okay. You've got all these boxes and Boxly takes all that box data and combines it into one box. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to deal with here. Okay. Because this way we're not dealing with the technicalities of the product just yet. You're trying to get people excited about how all their box data is going to be in the one place now. Mm-hmm. No more boxes. A single cube. A one box for all your boxes. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> There's your tagline. Russian doll situation with boxes. And then we get into features. See, we knew it was coming, did we, Dear Lords? We've done the key benefits. Next step after that is talking about the specifics of, you know, using Boxly, not only do we handle all of your box data, but you can also connect it to your smartphone. Boxly talks with all of your other services, connecting boxes to new boxes in different organizations. <laughs> then you go into those specific technicalities. I yeah. really want to make this box animation. Oh, wait, I said we reach out to Boxly. I don't have an animation. <laughs> I don't see a video on this homepage here. This could be any app. The easiest way to connect and experience data. This is like the, f- what is this? <laughs> This is just Boxly review this episode now. Wait, I'm subscribing. Should we subscribe? There's nothing funnier that Boxly exists. Especially Boxly.io is so specific. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a fake app. Oh, <laughs> God, all right. Streamlining your workflow and reducing box clutter. With spheres at your disposal, boxes are a worry of the past. But Boxly.io doesn't stay in the box. With powerful add-ons like collaboration tools, box overview, and cloud storage, you're always connected to your box, even on the go. Getting into the, all right features. Features, features were great. Okay, so so far we what do we have? We've got we introduced the product. No, we didn't. We, we introduced the problem. problem. We've said Boxly is the solution. We've talked about the benefits of Boxly, the big things like why is Boxly the shit, and then how does Boxly actually do that? That's the features. The nitty gritty. Then you've only got your ninety seconds, so I think then it's time you want to kind of curve those features back in towards what is that key benefit again? Yep. And that's your kind of leading into that call to action. So the last segment is really a call to action and you want to finesse it. You don't want to end with like Boxly connects to also your mobile phone. Boxly, use Boxly. You need to like curve it back to, you know, Boxly connects to your mobile phone, meaning that all your boxes are in the one place. Yeah, right. That's why you need Boxly. Go to Boxly.box, Boxly.io and get boxes. You know <laughs> Shout what I mean? out to Boxly. This will be the most illegible episode because I'm just talking so aggressively about boxes. It's making a lot of sense to me. It is. It is. And you're helping me out here. I'm ready to write a script. So that's... <laughs> or am I? You're not. <laughs> because just selling a box is the first step of the process. All right? Now you need to understand some of the nitty gritty, like word count, writing, style, and overcoming that writer's block. Let's get into it. Um, word count. Yeah, this is where you shine, I think, because anytime like, I'm dealing with a client and shit... And they send me a script back and I'm just, I'll just be like, sweet, thanks for that. I'll just go order the voiceover now without thinking like they're only paying for like a 60 second explainer yeah. and it's got a million words. I That's don't really true. know how to... It, it is surprising when you're reading something out loud how, um, how much time it takes to say a number of words. So I recommend that like I'll give you some rough guides now, but it is well worth just reading it out to yourself yeah. before you send it over so you know. But you do need to... Before you even start the scripting process, you need to pre-position the client that there's only going to be this many words probably. Yeah. So don't give me information that's going to fill like 600, 700 words because there's just no way we'll be able to communicate it. Yeah. So really, and even you need to be repetitive in your script. Like it's, it's not like they can give you just the exact amount of words and you turn that into the script. Like you need to say the tagline maybe like at the start. And at the end, you know? Yeah. Drill home the fucking actual points. Exactly. There needs to be some character to it. So it can't just be like, just fucking feature cram the whole time. Um, I think a good rule of thumb is that one minute is going to be like anywhere from 125 words to like 170 words, depending on how fast it's going to get read. Mm -hmm. 170 is like definitely on the bigger end. Mm -hmm. Most of my scripts, I will lead towards, let's do a smaller word count. Because, you know, like the best animations, they have like a bit of, there might be a pause for something that leads yeah, yeah. to like a moment or you've got some time for sound design. Yeah. And in the past, we've been terrible. We've never Oh, fuck yeah, that. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. We were just talking about this this morning, how it's like, you'll just try to do like heaps of fucking like transitioning and crazy shit or whatever. 
Yeah, just yeah, just like if you've got like someone running through a script, you're there transitioning the scene every yeah, five yeah. seconds. It's just awful. Like it's really hard to follow that. So yeah, some breathing room. If you've got your like a main point just hit, that's okay. Have some fun motion during that point. Give it a bit of breathing time so people can actually absorb it. That's a huge thing. Just absorbing yeah. the information because like. Yeah, we have done some ones in the past where they're like, it's perfect, we love it. But it's like, not really because... <laughs> I, what the I fuck is this? <laughs> I did this animation, I don't understand the product. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and like that's, I mean, that's a bit of negotiation skills. Like clients, it's so funny with scripts, especially if it's a client that um, it's like their business or they're the CEO or it's like they made this product or whatever it is. They're so close to it that they... They know it so well, they think everyone else is going to understand the language, yeah. but you are the outsider and that actually makes you the expert in how to communicate this because once you've worked with them to understand it, you know how simple the pitch should be yeah. and you need to guide them towards that. Yeah. And part of that is less words, more time to think about it. Um, don't get into the most technical aspects of your product, stuff like that. So yeah. and I guess plus like who the target market, I suppose, as well, like how they're going to yeah. like take it in. Well, that's true because this might be an engineer selling it to like, fucking, I don't know, like fitness instructors. Yeah, right. And they need to speak. Do you like abs? What about push-ups? boy yo That's thick. You need boxly. Put your muscles in a box. Get that box gap you've always dreamed of. Is that allowed to be in this? That's your word count. That's the word count, guys. You heard it here first. Was that for a 90 second? You said 120 to 170. Is that for 90 second or a minute? That's for a minute. Okay. So just scale that up per if you got like, you know, it'll be like that. One Hard times one plus five. That. Yeah. Right. But read it. But also give them the lower number as what the script count is going to be. They'll give you information. They'll give you way more. They'll give time. you way more. But it'll temper the expectations and then you got a bit of wiggle room. Makes sense. I mean, am I ready to write a script now, Miles? Hold on there, Joel. You've got a box. You've got a word count. But does it sound natural? Gee whiz. I don't know, Miles. <laughs> Boxley is a people product. <laughs> so we got to make sure that Boxley comes across as human as it is. Cool. And continue. Um, writing. T- you got to make it sound natural. Uh, oh, man, get a box. Make it natural. Yeah, you guys might want some boxes. Yeah, boxes are cool. 100%, man. Don't be a square. Get Boxley. I like boxes. You and me both, brother. That's natural. All right. How to sound natural. What? Is there a method to sounding natural? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the trick to sounding natural is to be a robot. Ha ha ha. It is worth noting that when you send the script off, it's going to like a human being that's going to read it. And I've been in like voiceover sessions where we paid someone a lot of money. I've written the script and then you see them trying to read a long sentence and they're struggling through it and it mm. doesn't feel right. So once you've written your script, just give it a quick once over, read it yourself a few times mm-hmm. and see if it feels right. Like, does it sound like someone's actually talking? Yeah. Because you know? a lot of time it just, it sounds like a written script. Yeah. And it's a lot better to, I think most brands these days want to uh, be a little more like human, human. connection Yeah. So not lots of, I think it's good to abbreviate lots of words like you're instead of you are. Yeah. Stuff cool. like that. Like those little details, um, if you read your script out, you'll naturally want to do that when you're reading it and you'll mm-hmm. say, all right, I should have, that should have been an abbreviation or whatever it is. Shit like that. Don't make your sentences too long because if humans do really long run-on sentences, humans, <laughs> when people do really long <laughs> run-on sentences, in real life, when people are going on and on in one sentence, they're saying like a lot and 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 um, so there's lots of natural breaks Yeah. where if you're writing it out and you want it to sound still professional, you need to just shorten those sentences. Don't keep adding ands and stuff because... People get away with it in normal conversation because they're punctuating it naturally all the time with stupid ums and ahs and likes. So yeah. when you're writing for someone to read it, keep the sentences quite short. Good tip. If you're doing bullet points in anywhere, which always ends up in a script, like the always. key sass things like blah, 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 blah. And? Yes. Do stuff like add an and to the last one so the voiceover person reads that. Boxley includes a box that... Blah, 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 blah. Like, don't put... Sometimes people put, like, a weird lead into each bullet point. Just make sure okay. it flows naturally as one sentence. So okay. no, that makes sense. There's some things that people stupidly do, and your clients will give you stupid edits, so just watch out for that. Have an and at the end. And then... Again. Am I ready to write a script yet, Miles? Whoa, slow down there, Joel. 
<laughs> you write something now, no one's going to buy Boxley.io. <laughs> you bitch. So I'm not ready to write a script. You're not ready to write a script because now you've got writer's block. All right. Writer's, that's true. You ate several Subway sandwiches over the course of a week. That's true. You've been riding that Subway train cart all fucking week. You've been riding footlongs. They're backed up. You're jammed up. I'm You're not to get feeling that, good. Buy 12, get a foot free. That's what I'm saying. You're 12 foot deep. Yeah. All right. And you are feeling like backed up. I find that I really struggle to like start the process, you know, or I did in the past. Like every time I'd just be like, oh God, I have to write a script. And I would sit there with a blank page. You write the first sentence, get that right. And then you're just sitting there for like ages. So yeah. Best way to avoid this is first write out the structure that we talked about at the start. Just say problem, introduction of products, like main benefit, feature set, call to action. So you're like, all right, these are the areas I need to fill. And then just write, honestly, like a ludicrously shit version of it in each of those segments. Okay. Like I go, I'll honestly, um, I don't know, say it as like a big finance app or something, or it's like Boxly, let's say. Like Boxly. So let's say it's some sort of like, uh, you know, hypothetical Boxly app, dot .io. It's something stupid like that doesn't really <laughs> exist. And you're just trying to write about it. So say goodbye to the box overload and say hello to a simplified sphere workflow with Boxly.io. Boxly.io. It's in the box. I will just do like massive stupid run on sentences where it's like, you know, with the problems, it'll be like, there are too many boxes these days and boxes are boxes and everyone's got a box and just like stream of consciousness, write out everything that needs to be in that segment. Do that for each of them. And then you can go back and fix it. But you've already got the content in. You can look at that terrible sentence and say, that bit's stupid. I don't even need that. Yeah. So you're not trying to write a script. You're trying to edit as if someone handed you a terrible script. And it's okay. a lot easier process. So I just recommend doing that. Like that's write out tip. your structure, do a terrible version, and then just edit that like several times on your own. And that's how you get your script. So did you just like figure that out yourself? Um, yes, I've just wasted a lot of time in my life just doing like standard. I think it probably is just a normal writing tip though. I swear it must have been out there in the world because... I mean, these are all good tips, man. Hey, if you want writing tips, that's we know that's why you came to this channel because you want to be a little prose master. I think I'm ready to write a script. You know what, Joel? I think you are too. <laughs> that's how you write a fucking script. Wow. I think I'm ready to write a script. Now. I think we're all feeling ready to write a script now, Joel. Yep. Start with a structure. Stick to your word count. Make sure that it sounds natural. And then stop being blocked. Don't do that. Yeah. Do the other things that we said. Unblock yourself. Unblock. Unblock anyone. Wow, I'm excited because this week we're going to do a... Family Fun Design Design Corner. Corner. Good trailing off there, Joel. (laughs) Who do we got today, Joel? We have Lucas Wakabatsu, who is an illustrator and graphic designer, and he's Brazilian. Oh, let's take a look. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, this guy's a gun, man. Um, Fucking really bright colors. Does a lot of uh, characters and stuff like that. Um, Really great compositions. Definitely know it's his style. Mm. Does some prints and shit too. Really good shit. I love it. I love the colors. I love the hands where its wrists go straight into fingies. I'm down with that, Town. That is cool. Yeah, mainly the colors. Like, he really knows how to use some colors. And he's got some, he plays with some gradients and shit like that as well, which is cool. They're always like super bright colors, really bright palettes. I like that kind of like pattern texture effect too, where it's just, you just use like a, you mean like an actual, just like a proper yeah, yeah, pattern yeah. and that's your texture. I, I like that's that. really good. We, yeah, we never really played around with that too much. Never ever. I have once. Once. But uh, yeah. Let's not talk about that though. He's really good at illustrating people. Like I like how the same thing with the hands. Like goes from wrist straight into fingers. The th- th- super thick ankles just go straight down to the foot. I like something like that. Nothing wrong with a thick ankle. Wait, cankles and wankles. <laughs> Fuck. Lucas Wakamatsu, you're a talented man. <laughs> Your illustrations are amazing, and you've, you've been, been cornered. cornered. <laughs> that was good. That was not bad. Team Joel, uh, the Jolches. <laughs> <laughs> miles piles stay true piles of miles <laughs> I'm thinking about getting a daylord tattoo 2030 daylord that's not bad that's not pretty good tramp stamp true day yeah true daylord true like a butterfly yes. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what if we get that 2.26 subscribers <laughs> I would pay for you to get a daylord tramp stamp and I would business expense it dude just think next time you're getting plowed this guy's a real daylord <laughs> I love that show that's where I know I'm from <laughs> Should we end this episode with the phrase that we always say? We should. 
Queef. <laughs> oh, shit. Queef. <laughs> oh, shit.